Uh, and if you would have told me that I could live my full authentic self, that I could do work that I could love, that I love, that I have a man that I love, uh, that I have work that is truly meaningful and impactful, um, I don't know if I would have believed you. And so to have this ability to be sitting here in my full self, being supported by the President of the United States uh, and making an impact on thousands of communities, it, it means the world to me. Hey, Grio fam, it's Jaron Keith Gaynor, White House correspondent and managing editor of politics at The Grio. And I'm here with Michael D. Smith, who is the CEO of AmeriCorps. Uh, Michael, welcome to The Grio. Pleasure to have you. It's good to be here. So for, first, for those who are not aware of the work of AmeriCorps, could you explain and uh, what does it mean to you to be shepherding this federal agency at this time? Well, thanks again for having me. AmeriCorps is the federal agency for volunteering and service. We use the power of civic engagement uh, to strengthen communities and transform lives. We've been around for 30 years. Today, there are about 200,000 AmeriCorps members and AmeriCorps senior volunteers that are serving in more than 40,000 locations across the country. So chances are, if there are kids in schools helping to tutor others and mentor them, uh, if there are folks that are working in food pantries, if there are people that are uh, building trails and responding to disasters. AmeriCorps members are right there. And uh, it's Pride Month. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. You are, are I believe, the highest ranking uh, gay Black man uh, in the administration. Um, and when I think about Pride, I think about representation. I know for me, when I look to my left and I look to my right, and uh, the White House press corps, there's not really anyone aside from maybe one other person who's like me. Um, and so I know how significant it is in these spaces. Uh, what does it mean for you to be uh, a part of the LGBTQ plus community in such a, a high ranking position um, and having the ability to influence? Well, it's, it, it's so interesting. I grew up in a busing program in Western Massachusetts. So it, it always surprises me when we're still having first all of these years later. Uh, today was the day that the John Lewis stamp was uh, released for, for the post office. And I just think of the progress we made, but there's still progress to go. Uh, you know, for me, it means a lot. I grew up as a closeted kid growing up in a Pentecostal church in Western Massachusetts where my pastor, who I loved, also said they'll never have a sissy preach in his pulpit. Uh, and so I had to change my whole life trajectory when I realized that I wasn't being delivered from being gay. Uh, and if you would have told me that I could live my full authentic self, that I could do work that I love, that I have a man that I love, uh, that I have work that is truly meaningful and impactful, um, I don't know if I would have believed you. And so to have this ability to be sitting here in my full self, being supported by the President of the United States and making an impact on thousands of communities, it, it means the world to me. Uh, th thank you for sharing part of your story. And I'm, I'm curious to know, um, how did you uh, come to a life of public service? Like what inspired you? You know, I, I grew up in a, in a poor black neighborhood, right? We didn't have a whole lot of resources, but we had a community that took care of each other. People who took their last dime uh, because they believed in the words that our neighbor's kids are our kids. And I grew up going to a boys and girls club. Uh, my mom was 16 years old when I was born and she sent me there for what she said was cheap daycare. And it was there that I got bitten by the, the service bug. It was there that I met my first AmeriCorps members, actually before the agency was created. There were foster grandparents and there were VISTAs. And there were these people who loved and lifted me up, kept me in line. Uh, and I knew at a very early age that I, I wanted to lead a career that was honoring them, that was giving back to them and making it easier uh, for them and making it easier for kids like me to achieve their dreams. And so I've been able to work a little bit in Congress, work at the White House, work in nonprofits, work in philanthropy. But the North Star for me was about giving back and lifting up. And President Biden um, has really centered uh, equity in his administration. Uh, I'm curious to know, uh, what does that mean for you uh, as a leader of AmeriCorps and advancing equity as it relates to uh, Black and Brown communities and the LGBTQ plus community? You know, what I love about this administration's focus on equity is it isn't a talking point. It isn't a parade. Uh, isn't, it isn't a party that happens in June. Uh, it shows up in policy, it shows up in legislation, it shows up in a record number of appointments of people that look like America. At AmeriCorps, it shows up in our first ever diversity, equity, inclusion plan, our first ever chief diversity officer. Uh, it shows up in today. Uh, I was actually just on an AmeriCorps staff pride call with a, a, a transgender employee who said she feels safe and comfortable 
uh, working at AmeriCorps because we have the policies that make her safe and comfortable. It shows up in ways where AmeriCorps members all around this country, no matter where they're serving, knowing that we're going to create community for them and knowing that we're going to have their back. And so it's not just about talking about it, it's making sure that we invest in it uh, and we put forth policy uh, that shows what diversity, equity, and inclusion looks like in action. You know, one of the things that's so great about AmeriCorps, some people think that it's a gap year for affluent kids, but AmeriCorps is actually more diverse than the nation. Uh, and more than 40% of AmeriCorps members come from low-income backgrounds. So it's not only a true tool to support uh, communities of color, but it's been a transformational tool for AmeriCorps members that are uh, people of color as well. And so it's a great opportunity for, for folks to think about. And um, I love your background because you uh, previously worked for the Obama administration um, uh, running the My Brother's Keeper initiative and then later the My Brother's Alliance after the Obama administration. What were your fondest memories of, of that work and what did you glean from that experience as it relates to um, uplifting and supporting Black men and young Black men in particular? You know, the work of My Brother's Keeper was deeply personal to me. I was actually working at the AmeriCorps agency uh, when President Obama surprised the press corps and he said, Trayvon could have been my son. And he said, there has to be more that we can do to make sure young men of color know that their country cares about them and is willing to invest in them. And I remember sitting in my office crying, thinking, I can't believe I work for a president who sees me. I had actually just lost my brother to gun violence. Uh, and the next day, I got a phone call saying, the president was serious about this. Will you help us think about what we can do? And what I loved about that, again, it wasn't about a talking point. President Obama made the work of My Brother's Keeper as serious as anything else that we did in the administration. It had to be evidence-based, it had to be incremental, and it had to be about change that was going to happen in the real time, not waiting for 30 to 40 years uh, for change to take place, because the kids today knew that that matters. And so I brought that sense of urgency. I brought that sense of proximity. Um, I brought that sense of, sense of who's who aren't we paying attention to? Uh, where are the gaps and how do we address that? Um, and, you know, one of the things that I, I learned from President Obama is surrounding yourself with smart, talented people. Uh, and it's not always going to be the person that has the PhD, PhD that has the best idea in the room. Sometimes it might be the young intern uh, that helps to, to take you to the next level. And so I, I, I love and live that work. I'm so proud that AmeriCorps continues to support my brother's keeper communities across that country. And there's so much of my time uh, in the Obama administration and the Obama Foundation that I, I bring with me every day. Uh, where are the challenges of your job? Uh, do you find that there are uh, many Americans who are are willing and able to uh, to volunteer and and, and work uh, and serve uh, uh, as the the mission of AmeriCorps? Well, AmeriCorps releases a biannual study uh, with the Census Bureau, and we actually just released numbers showing that for the first time ever during the pandemic. We saw a seven percentage point dip in the number of Americans that volunteer with nonprofits on a regular basis. So that dropped down to about 23 percent. That same study, though, showed that the number of Americans that do the neighbor helping neighbor work stayed strong and steady over 50 percent of Americans all across that country. So I saw when the going got tough, AmeriCorps got tougher and Americans continued to help and serve their neighbor. They checked in on the elderly and went to the grocery store with them. They set up learning pods, uh, putting their own health at risk because they knew that neighbors who were first responders or working in grocery stores, their kids needed a safe place to go. So I get to see, I think, America at its best. And I'm so proud that AmeriCorps when when things were at their darkest days, we never closed our doors. We touched 12 million people during the pandemic and vaccination and testing lines and food banks um, and, and responding in all sorts of ways to learning loss that we were seeing during the pandemic. Uh, so there is some concern. We need to make sure that people are going to get back and volunteer with nonprofit organizations. Uh, but I'm really confident that Americans are going to show up. And I'm really excited that this next generation has shown that they're going to be unstoppable. And for those who might be interested or maybe they want to learn a little bit more, um, how can they learn more about AmeriCorps and how to serve? Well, if you're thinking about serving your country and, and you can't do the military, think about joining AmeriCorps. Uh, there is something for you, whether you care about the environment or you care about food insecurity, or if you care about mental health, uh, you can become an AmeriCorps member, age 18 to 80. We have AmeriCorps members that are serving. You get a living allowance, you get an education award, 
And you also get a transformative experience that can change the directory of your life. It's, you know, not just a, a pit stop. It is a pathway where people end up having a lifetime of service and not just a year of service. So they should go to AmeriCorps.gov. We have a tool called the Fit Finder, and they can find the AmeriCorps program that works for them. And lastly, um, what is your pride message to the LGBTQ plus community, especially young people who, um, while we are seeing, I see way more people um, uh, declaring who they are at younger ages, but we also know that there are messages and laws uh, that don't make them feel uh, so great uh, and so prideful this Pride Month. What's your message to them? I, I think of two things. One, I think power seeds nothing without demand, right? So we're, we're going to have to keep fighting. But also you asked me about My Brother's Keeper. And one of the last things we did after George Floyd was killed is we had a town hall with John Lewis. And Congressman Lewis and, and reminded us to get in good trouble. And he said, you know, people come up to me all the time and said, we haven't made the progress that we should have in the civil rights movement. And he says, I wish you would have lived my life. I wish you would have seen what we have seen. Because while there is so much fight to do, we have made so much progress. And I and I see that, you know, we got to keep bending that moral ar arc. It's going to bend towards progress. We're going to have some setbacks. We're going to have some slips. But let's celebrate the victories. Let's know where we came from, uh, but never for a minute rest because we're going to have to keep pushing it. Uh, Michael D. Smith, uh, CEO of AmeriCorps. Thank you again for your time and happy pride. Happy pride. Thank you.